Hey people, what's up? This is going to be the second video into my creation kit tutorial series. And in this one, I'm going to explain to you the whole magic effect window. The first thing you'll see when you open up this window will be the ID section. This is just the unique name that you're going to give it so that you can find it in this editor ID in the object window. The next one is name. This is just going to be the name that will appear in your inventory in the actual in-game magic effects window. Effect archetype is pretty much the core of the, the whole magic effect. These options here, if you click on the drop down, this is, this is pretty much going to be how your spell works. So let's say you want to make a, a damage spell. What you want to click here it will be either value modifier or dual value modifier, which is what frost and lightning spells use. Casting type, this is pretty much just the way you will fire the spell. Concentration is more like flames. Constant effect, that's more for like a passive ability like resist frost on Nords. And fire and forget is pretty much just when you fire the spell, you forget about it afterwards. You just fire it once and you're done. Delivery type, this is pretty much just how your spell will actually reach its intended target. So if you want to cast it on yourself, you would click self. Contact is more for like diseases. So let's say you cast a spell and you, you uh, have contact, whatever hits you will actually get the effect. Aimed, that's pretty much if you have a projectile like Firebolt. Target Actor, this looks more like a telepathic spell. You pretty much just put your crosshair on the target, cast the spell, and it'll activate immediately without any sort of projectile. Target Location, this is only for summoning and runes. Wherever you cast the spell, it'll actually stick to the floor or wherever the, the surface location is. The magic skill is pretty self-explanatory. This is just what school of magic your spell effect will be under, or it could be under none. Minimum skill level is actually pretty important. If you want it to stay as novice, just stick it at zero. If you want it to be apprentice, just stick it as 25. Adept, 50. Expert, 75. Master, 100. And that's pretty much it. Associated item one and two. This is only for specific arc effect archetypes. And what this does, so let's we picked dual value modifier. Let's say you want to make a damage spell. Associated item one, you would click health. And then let's say it's a frost spell. We would click stamina. Now, whatever we set the magnitude to, it will affect both these uh, these items. Resist value, this is only if you want NPCs to actually resist your spell. Let's say you make a frost spell. If you don't put resist frost, your spell will hit right through the NPC with resist frost. Perk to apply, um, if you make a perk that does a specific action or effect, you can place it here and the magic effect will be casted on the target instead of anything else or on top of everything else. To further explain this perk to apply option, let's say you are making a frost spell, which we have set up here. Um, let's say on top of this frost damage, you wanted to lose effectiveness with alchemy. So you would click on one of the alchemy uh, perks. Let's say that one, the first one, the novice. You would click detrimental down here, and now he will also lose effectiveness with alchemy on top of the actual frost damage. Taper duration, taper weight, and taper curve are just sort of like after effects, after the real magic effect has ended. A good example to show you is how flames work. Flames and any sort of fire spell leaves a damage over time afterwards. It's done through taper duration. So taper duration is just how long the effect lasts after the actual magic effect has ended. Taper weight is how strong it is. And taper curve is just the curve at, at which it decreases throughout the duration. Base cost is just pretty much how much magicka cost your, uh, your spell will cost. Higher numbers means more magicka. Lesser numbers means less magicka. Skill usage multiplier, this is just how much XP you will get every time you cast a spell on yourself, on anyone, on anything. The higher the number, the more experience you get. The less the number, the less experience you get. Flags, this is almost as important as the actual effect archetype in terms of how your spell will work. The first one, hostile, this is if you want the NPC to be hostile to you if you cast the effect on them. Detrimental, this is if you want the spell to harm them or buff them. Recover is if you want the NPC to return to its original state after the duration is over of the magic effect. FX persist, this is if you want the magic effect to actually persist throughout the whole duration. No recast, pretty self-explanatory, you can't recast a spell on them. This is a little bit more complicated than, than it actually sounds. I've noticed that if I click this, I can still recast the spell, but I'll further explain that in another video when we actually make a spell. No hit effect, this is if you want your spell to not cause any sort of FX. No death to spell, this is if you want the magic effect to persist even after the NPC has died. No duration, this is pretty self-explanatory, no duration on your spell. No hit event, this is more for stealth purposes. If you click this, your spell won't cause any sort of uh, attention to yourself. No magnitude, pretty self-explanatory, no magnitude on your spell. Same thing for no area, if you don't want area, just click this. Painless, whenever you cast a spell on yourself or on an NPC, there will be no uh, screaming sound. Gory visuals, don't worry about that, I actually have no idea what this does. Hide in UI, this is if you don't want the, the magic effect to appear in your magic inventory in the actual game. And that's pretty much it for flags. 
The next one is keywords. All keywords do is pretty much prevent spells from being stacked on top of each other if they have the same keyword active. Counter effects, don't worry about counter effects. It has been replaced by keywords. The next one is target conditions. Target conditions are really, really important. You can make your spell really unique with these options. You can make it so that it only affects elves. You can make it so that it only affects giants. You can make it so that it's only casted at night. You can do a lot of things with this option. Let's say you want your spell to only affect the undead. You would find the has keyword option. Then you would click has keyword actor type undead. You would set the value to one and you're done. Your spell will now actually work only on undead. I'll explain more about this when we actually make a spell in the, the next video. This whole middle section here is just how your uh, your actual spell will look like. Menu display object, this is just the actual art that will be displayed in your magic inventory. Casting art is going to be the art in your hands when your spell is out in the open. Casting light is going to be the light that emits from your hands when your hands are out in the open. Hit effect art is just going to be the art that plays when you actually impact someone. Hit shader is going to be the FX visual that's going to be played throughout the whole duration of the magic effect. Enchant art and enchant shader is just for uh, enchanting purposes. Projectile only matters if you have this as aimed or self. It'll cast a projectile whenever you cast the, the magic effect. Impact data set is the decal whenever your uh, magic effect hits a certain object. Explosion, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is just the explosion that'll happen whenever your spell hits an object. Image space spot, this is actually really, really cool. What this does is pretty much change how your world looks throughout this whole spell duration. If you've ever used the Berserker Rage on the orc, that whole reddish tint on the screen, that's done through image space modding. Dual casting, you don't have to worry about this. I think only two things use it. The scaling portion in this section is just how your dual casting will scale. Spell making. This section is as equally important as the flags and the effect archetype. Right next to the power effects, you have magnitude and duration. This is if you want your spell to have a certain magnitude, or if you want your spell to have a specific duration, or both. Down here in the area section, this is if you want your spell to have a certain area. And it's not in radius, it's in uh, circumference. Casting time, this is how long you have to hold your mouse button for it to actually be ready to cast. Script effect AI data, this is only for NPCs. Score will be how often they use a spell, and delay time would be how long they have to wait before they use it again. Equipped ability, you don't have to worry too much about that, that's pretty much just for master spells. It's just going to be the way you equip your, your, your spell in your hand if it's, a, if it's a master spell, the whole ritual type casting thing. The next section is sounds, and this is just how your spell will sound. These options are very self-explanatory. Draw sheath, the sound when you uh, bring out your hands. Charge when you're charging up the spell. Ready when it's ready in your hands. Release when you actually fire it. Cast loop will play the same sound over and over again like flames and sparks. On hit, this is a sound that will happen when you actually hit a, an object. And the last one is casting sound level. This is if your spell will sound normal, loud, silent, or very loud. Magic item description. This is just going to be the description of your spell that you'll see in your magic inventory. And the last one is papyrus scripts. I don't know too much about papyrus scripts. I do know that you can actually uh, sort of extend visual effects through the use of papyrus scripts. But you can make your spell do way more things with it. But yeah, like I said, I don't know too much about it. I'm still learning myself. So I can't fully elaborate on this option for you in this tutorial video. But I will further explain to you this option when I further learn it myself. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the whole magic effect window. The next video, we're going to make a spell. And I'll be able to explain to you better uh, how these options work and how they can work with different options outside of this magic window. And yeah, that's going to be the end for this tutorial video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.